Hello there. Welcome back. I'm going to start over. Hello there. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to go over how to operate my room mode calculators. Imperial or metric, doesn't matter. Um, let's say, okay, let's say you have a room that you're building from scratch, okay? Let's go to my AutoCAD. For example, you have this rectangular cuboid, okay? It is, uh, we, we've calculated these uh, dimensions from Bonello, uh, I mean, from, excuse me, from Bolt, from Richard H. Bolt, and we're taking the G ratio right here. It is 1 to 1.5 to 2.5. Let's go down, look at that table. It's under the G table. It gives us a really, really nice big room, 146 cubic meters, huge a response down to 20 hertz. Let's look at the um, Okay, that is 853509337853509. When you enter, enter your numbers, be sure after you're done, you want to see things print out right, you have to go control shift sort. Control shift S. And then control shift C to copy the data over. Now you can see how the lines have shifted. We've got a little hole here and a hole here. This this room responds all the way down to 20 hertz. It's amazing. It's wonderful. But we have a problem. It doesn't meet Bonello in the 25 hertz one-third octave band. <clears throat> so we've got to change that. This means 25 hertz, we've got 20 and 33 is your width mode. This is not wide enough. So I just go to using prime numbers. 631 and we can make it work there there it is go down here and it matches it meets Bonello thing is we still got a bunch of holes and this is this started off in a in an ideal room here in a uh, bolt ratio this is why I say that ratios don't always work now we can go, let's go to another ratio, which is <clears throat> down here. That's, it's also bolt. It's the one to 1 1.26 to 1.59. This works well. Now, as you can see in my spreadsheet calculators on the ideal rooms, you'll see that I have a prime uh, uh, column. <clears throat> so it takes a um, a regular number put in and it converts it to the nearest prime. So uh, the reason I use primes is they're only divisible by one and themselves. So if you if you go with prime you're not going to have double incidences so much. Doesn't cure everything but it, it certainly helps. So we go to 541 431 337, let's see what that is. 541431. Control Shift S, Control Shift C. And it's a smaller room. It's 2,700 cubic feet or 78 cubic meters, but it meets Bonello. It's nice, uh, quite even distribution, pretty even. And uh, not bad. Now, let's look at a, uh, an imperial spreadsheet calculator in inches. Same, same volume, similar, is a height of 137 inches, width of 173 inches, and 223 inches long. That's 18 and a half by 14 and a half by 11 and a half. And that gives you a volume of about 3,000 cubic feet or 86 cubic meters, not bad. It's very similar to the room I just showed you in here, right here in the metric calculator. <clears throat> so let's go back to Imperial. This 
spreadsheet also shows you go down below the Bonello distribution chart you can see there's your regions it's this one uh, will get you down to 30 Hertz not too bad your Schroeder frequency for this room is 99 100 Hertz and uh, <clears throat> this is important to know uh, this is your wave region this is when this is the region once treated now this is treated this is calculating on a treated room your wave region will be from 30 to 90 to 100 Hertz everything else will be in the diffusive region and or ray region so it's also good to know your cutoff into the pressure zone which is 30.4 Hertz for this room now if this room it has a, a gypsum board construction and they're thin they're not layered and heavy and massive <clears throat> frequencies below 30 is going to pass right through. Um, depending on the mass, it, they start passing through at 100. So that's something else. That's for another spreadsheet calculator. We'll go into my reflections boundaries mass in the next one. But for this room, sized, again, I'll go look at this again, 18 and a half feet by, by 14 and a half feet by 11 and a half feet your the maximum RT60 and not this is not your target this is the maximum you can have less RT60 from 200 Hertz to 8 kilohertz and on should be no more than 0.24 seconds okay 0.24 seconds now from 200 Hertz down to 63 there is a permissible rise to 0.3 seconds not much it's 0 0.06 seconds longer okay that's not a lot it's a, it's a little rise it's permissible now past 63 Hertz you should not let that thing climb you're looking at your response you can look at when you do your testing in REW you can see on waterfall graph on the waterfall graph you can see on the tail end the big if that, if that tail end at, at 30 and lower or below 100 hertz is, has a long tail on it, your RT60 down there is not, not low enough. It's, it's ringing on and you've got a ring going on. You need to use trapping. If you are in a concrete brick block or otherwise massive room, you have to use membrane traps. You've got to get that very low frequency targeted. It's best also, when I'm, while I'm on the subject of membrane traps, when you are d building a membrane trap for a certain room size, for instance, you've got an axial mode at 30 hertz, you should have one tuned to 30. And what that will do, if you take care of 30 hertz, if you trap 30 hertz, you're not going to have a harmonic at 60, 120. 240 Hertz. You're not going to have those. So that, that's covered. Okay. Your Schroeder frequency is at 99, 100 Hertz. You take that Schroeder frequency times the square root of two and you come up with 140 Hertz. So you don't want any problematic free, uh, resonances below that. Okay. So make sure it's all taken care of. Make sure you have good distribution. And that's what this is doing right here. <clears throat> Um, gives you other information, max depth for the Schroeder 1D, etc., and, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'll give you some other information here. You can also go to mode strength. It's good to check out your mode strength. Here I have a piano keyboard. It can show you your notes that correspond to different frequencies. If you look at this, we have a 1 right here near coincidence at 49.6 versus 49.4. Let's see what that is. 49.4 and 49.6. Okay, this is okay since it's a tangential. If you have an axial mode that's that close, you could have some problems as, you know, when you converge two waves, they add. And so you're gonna have a bump in that area of the spectrum. 
uh, tangential is much lower energy, so it'd be maybe a slight rise, but if you have proper trapping, it'll smooth it all out. <clears throat> uh, going on up, there's one uh, 78.3 and 78.4, oh my, those, that's also tangential and axial. Uh, 99, I believe same. So we've got 99, axial, tangential, tangential. They're not quite the same, but they're pretty darn close and they can cause a rise in that, in that area. So these are things to be aware of. And what you want to do is when you have something like this, you want to tweak the dimensions just slightly so it spreads them out a little bit more. Gives it a little more room. Um, all in all, that's it. Uh, simple, pretty easy to do. Uh, go through these modes. There's a lot of, uh, I've got uh, Adobe Lab recommendations. You know, I mean, there are a bunch down here. If you scroll down, I'm not sure if I have this uploaded yet, all of this. But these ratios here are also Dolby certification ratios on the bottom. And you can go through them, you can plug them in, and you'll see that they don't always work. And you have to mess with them a little bit. So don't really count on having a certain ratio in your room and figure, oh, that'll work. That's a, that's a recommended ratio. Not necessarily. Double check, do the math. It's, it's all done there for you. So use it. If you have any problems, let me know. And uh, we'll go over it again. No problem. And, and so that you understand. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers.